Andrew, over to you. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. Um, I have uh, three distinct things that I wanted to talk about. Um, one is a case study on compulsory licensing that's ongoing. The second is regarding a, a fairly innovative voluntary license proposal that KEI has put forth. And the third is some recent news out of the U.S. from uh, Senator Sanders' office and regarding the Department of Veteran Affairs. So I'll start with Romania. Um, KEI Europe submitted a compulsory license request to Romania on the 15th of March. And uh, I should, uh, this is for uh, a broad array of hepatitis C medicines, and I, sh I guess I should take a second to explain a little bit about hepatitis C, in case you don't know. Hepatitis C is an infectious disease that affects the liver. Um, it's a very uh, bad disease that can take decades um, to wear people down. It, some people clear it, but about 80% of people who are infected go on to develop uh, chronic infection, which can lead to cirrhosis or liver cancer or death. Um, and Romania, so why Romania? Number one, we actually had several patients from Romania who had stage three or stage four uh, level of uh, liver disease reach out to us um, asking for our assistance because uh, numbers two, three, and four sort of go together. There, so in Romania has a, a really bad problem of access to hepatitis C medicines right now. Um, it has one of the two highest rates of hepatitis C in the EU in the EU, um, likely the, the, the highest rate, um, estimated between 3.2 and 6% of the population. An extremely low GNI per capita for the EU. It, it was uh, 9,060 US dollars in 2013. That's from 2013. That's from the World Bank Atlas method. Um, and the, the last factor here was that there, there are new, highly effective uh, direct acting antivirals for HCV, which are, um, they're excellent medicines, but they're extremely expensive. And so go to the next slide. Um, so the, the, there are a handful of these medicines that you've probably read about. Um, one is Cefospivir, which goes, uh, which is marketed right now under the name Savaldi. Another is a combination medicine of Cefospivir and Ladipisvir under the name Harvoni. Um, there's a pipeline drug called GS5816 right now. There's Decladisvir. There's, a, there's a, a combination pack that um, AbbVie puts out, under, un, marketed under the name Viacir pack, that is Dasabavir, Ombitisvir, Peritoprevir, and Ritonavir, and then Simeprevir. Um, so these, these medicines are all uh, very successful at fighting hepatitis C. Um, they're often above 90% um, success rates. Some of them are close to 100%. They're all effective against genotype one. There are six genotypes for hepatitis C. Um, in Romania, 99% of the population that's in, that has hepatitis C is genotype one. Um, so they would all work in, in Romania. Um, GS5816 has the, is a pan, pangenotypic medicine, which means that it, it could work on any one of the six genotypes um, and would basically get rid of the, the need for expensive diagnostic testing, which otherwise you would need to identify the genotype. And all of them have much better side effects uh, than the, the earlier medicines. Savaldi is extremely expensive. It uh, retails at $1,000 per pill. It's discounted, uh, re reported to be discounted to about $50,000, non-transparent um, volume rebates. Uh, Compare that to its estimates for manufacturing costs are at about $100 for a 12-week treatment. So compare that to what it's retailed for. Um, so what did we do in the mechanism of the compulsory license? Um, I'm happy to take questions because I, I feel like I want to move through these slides. But basically, we, we proposed uh, a, a broad compulsory license for covering all of these medicines and possibly combinations that we can't foresee right now. Um, and we did this in compliance with TRIPS, uh, the, tri the Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights. Article 31 is, is the article that lays out sort of the procedural requirements for, for compulsory licensing, but it's, it gives very, very broad powers to members to um, uh, initiate compulsory licenses. Um, it's also compliant with the Romanian Patents Act, um, and it has support in the Doha Declaration, and. EU regulations. And we also made it clear to the Romanian government that we, KEI would, and KEI Europe would be 
very happy to basically help in any possible way that they could conceivably need, whether it facil facilitating the supply, uh, helping with the clinical testing or registration. Um, these are complicated issues, but we, were, we offered assistance. Um, next slide. The, so th some of the concerns that were raised um, are, and these will be discussed in, in other um, presentations here, but the question came up of, you know, is there a precedent in the EU for something like this? And the answer is yes. And um, there, KEI produced an annex to our special, to comments that we provided to the USDR special 301 proceedings um, in 2014, where we laid out uh, many different examples in the last decade uh, where compulsory licenses were allowed for uh, having to do with medicines. Um, so the answer is definitely yes. Um, questions about regulatory issues in the EU regarding data exclusivity and marketing authorization. These are complicated, but they're workable. Um, there, there are possible answers which may be out there. Um, and, you know, there's, there's an EU regulation which uh, basically allows for a workaround on data exclusivity um, in cases where you're exporting the generic medicine. And, and it may be that that could provide some sort of precedent for the situation in Romania, like in Romania, where it's, it's not a, for the export of a generic, but um, it, it, may be, it may be some sort of precedent there. There's also, there's also uh, laws in Romania which allow for um, avoiding marketing authorization uh, for cases of special needs, um, which that, had, that law had been used within the last 10 years um, on tuberculosis medicines. Uh, its implementation, the order, would not be helpful in this case, but the law could be implemented with a different order, which could be helpful. Um, and then there are practical concerns about logistics, and these are, these are very workable and getting more workable by the day almost. Within two days of my leaving my trip to Bucharest at the end of March, um, the WHO announced that it was going to be uh, initiating its pre-qualification program for Sofospavir, which would it's basically the WHO's way of making this whole process a lot easier. It's sort of a, st a stamp of approval in a sense. Um, we know that there are generic manufacturers of Sofospavir. Um, some of them are very reputable. Um, so the questions about supply and quality, um, I think they would be easily addressed. So I want to I shift. I, I'm happy to take questions about that afterward, but I want to move, move on. Um, so one, one of the other things that KEI has done recently is put forth a, a very innovative proposal for a uh, global voluntary licensing proposal for HCV medicines, where we sent um, a, a proposal to the five major companies that are manufacturing all these medicines um, for current pending and future patents, global. But what, what really made this an innovative propo proposal was the, the royalty structure, which KEI came up with, which is different from what you, you typically, you may typically see where it's sort of a percentage of the generic price. In this proposal, we, we came up with sort of a, several different factors that go into the royalty. One is looking at the country, so the territory where the generic would go, that country's gross national income per capita in relation to the U.S. gross national income per capita. Um, second was the the rate of infection, the prevalence rate of hepatitis C in that country, and lastly, the individual stage of liver disease, of advanced liver disease. Um, and I can illustrate this. This is very technical, um, but just to quickly run through this, and I can answer questions again. Okay. Um, so the, there are. Th this is all on the KEI Europe website. Uh, there, there's three three tiers, three categories here. One, gross national income per capita of over 50% of the U U.S. gross national income per capita with a rate of less than or equal to 2%. And you can see which royalties uh, that would, if for different stages, one is 10% of the, gr of the country gross national income per capita. The next is 2% of, of country gross national in per income per capita. I'm, I can't say this as quickly as I need to to get through this. Um, but the point is that if you, if you tally this up, we, we broke this down uh, by looking at a, a lot of different countries and we, and we did sort of an estimate of what would this proposal yield if it actually were um, agreed to for a global, a, a global license. And we estimated that it would be around $7 billion for, for these companies. And um, so th this, accomplished, this proposal accomplishes two things. One is it, it shows a, a new model that the, the companies could possibly 
use, and, um, and it's, it's not a laughable amount of money that they could make. And the second is that it, it takes care of a requirement for that compulsory licenses need around the world where you have to, in most cases, make an effort to negotiate. Um, so we, we sort of took care of two birds with one stone with this. Okay, I'm very quickly going to go through these last ones and then um, I'm sorry for running over. This was recent, uh, recent news um, out of the US. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders um, from Vermont, he wrote a letter to the Secretary of the Department of Veteran Affairs um, very recently asking the, the VA to use its emergency powers um, to manufacture import generic hepatitis medicines. Why did he do this? Because the VA already used up all of the money allocated in its budget for hepatitis C medicines because of how expensive Sovaldi is. Um, the, the VA had treated only 20,000 out of 200,000 veterans that are believed to have hepatitis C. This, of course, reminds me of the Springsteen song, Born in the USA. He went down to the VA man. He said, son, you don't understand. It's a system failure here. Um, the, and this is, this is it, and I'm done. Uh, it, this year, we're going to be uh, rolling out compulsory license proposals elsewhere in the EU, in Latin America, and the Caribbean, on HCV, and on cancer drugs. We're happy to collaborate with anyone considering a compulsory license. Thank